Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this energy update for December 2023. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist and soul oracle. And I'm going to be sharing in this video an Akashic message from my guides to uh, kind of help us through this time. And I'll be sharing a bit of astrology of December 2023, as well as a quick spirit animal reading to support these energies. And let's just start with just the general feelings around uh, December. I'm just feeling like things are starting to really come to a head. I think we can all feel this right now. Um, the, the, my visual when I tuned into this month was just kind of like these spidery things coming down. I don't want anybody to be afraid of this, okay? And we're, I'm going to go into this with the Akashic message, which I think really is on point about this. But just the feeling is, okay, well, we are in the spiritual war, and it's just starting to ramp up a little bit more. Um, again, nothing to be afraid of, right? But we do need to be aware. Okay, so um, when I tuned in to uh, the Akash and, and asked my Akashic guides for some clarity on this month of December 2023, here's what they told me. Maintain your equanimity. The test of a soul is, it, is its opportunity for glory. Hold firm, you are here to hold the light. There is no saving grace in allowing your consciousness to follow those who are lost. Do not send your light after darkness. Rather, nurture it, encourage it to grow. Feed it with beautiful things, with the sacred and the holy. Feed it with gratitude. Lift your heart to the sun and give thanks. Ask the sun to enter into your heart, into your mind. Become radiant like the sun, and you will become a shining beacon of light in the darkening world. You will become an anchor for light, a lamp from which others may light their own vessels. Okay, so I just want to break this down here really quickly. Um, just some important points from this message. First of all, the, the, the phrase, the test of a soul, is its opportunity for glory. And I think this is an encouragement to, to understand that the dark night of the soul is a necessary part of the awakening journey for, for probably for all of us, right? So it's a bit of a caution against falling into the savior syndrome, right? Especially if you are awakening and working with the light, it's really easy to jump in and try to save people, right? Well, we can't do the work for others, but what we can do is hold space for them to go through their journey and, you know, if they come to us for help, of course, that's when we can really jump in and, and do the healing work that we're here for. Um, so I, I love that phrase, don't send your light after darkness, because there's a, a, a lot of kind of darkness out there that's wanting to distract us. The idea here is to work with your heart and work with the energy of the sun, right, which is Christ consciousness. And, and that goes beyond any kind of religious, that's the life wave of the planet, the evolutionary force, right, that, that brings us on this awakening journey that we can really tune into through the heart, right? And calling on the energy of the sun to bring it into that heart space so that we can become a shining light, right? Um, and part of what, like I think that the core really of, of that dynamic is really putting us, ourselves in devotion to others, putting ourselves into service. Um, Jordan Peterson recently said, and I love this, he said, the more you think about yourself, the more miserable you are. And he backs that up with like actual scientific studies. Um, so really, I think the encouragement here is to ask first, how can I be of greatest service to others in my work in my daily life? How can I best serve humanity? And I feel like if we keep asking ourselves that when we go into prayer, when we go into, you know, whatever daily devotions you have of consciously putting oneself into service with humanity, I feel like that is the best thing that we can do at this point. And that helps us to put everything into perspective so that we can maintain that balance, that equanimity, which is what helps others so much. We don't necessarily even have to do anything, but when, when we're in that divinely inspired presence of being in service, and you know, it can really help to anchor our own energy so that we can be that shining light to others, right? So going into the astrology of December 2023, just uh, uh, I know there's a lot going on astrologically. There's just a couple things that I wanted to point out. 
first of all, of course, we're going to have the solstice coming up, um, the, the December solstice, winter solstice for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. That happens on the uh, uh, December 21st. That's also the sun going into Capricorn. I'm going to make a separate video about that, but there's a couple of planets here that have been in retrograde and that are going direct here in December. And I wanted to spend a little time looking at that because I feel like that, that feels important to me. Um, first, Neptune is, plan is scheduled to go direct in Pisces on December 6th, okay? If Neptune's been in the sign of Pisces for a long, long time. It's been in there since, since uh, 2011. And it's um, Neptune is actually the ruler of Pisces and Neptune itself carries a lot of that Piscean energy. So it governs spirituality, empathy, imagination and the arts. But in its shadow side, it's associated with things like addictions, illusion and delusion that includes false light. OK, so Neptune's been in retrograde since last June in the sign of Pisces and in retrograde, it can really amplify the shadow aspects of Neptune and can create kind of a spiritual fog effect, right? And I personally was feeling that a lot, a lot, a lot over in, in the fall, especially right before and during that eclipse season that we had in October. Um, so if you have been experiencing that sense of being in a fog or not being able to see clearly, maybe it's been a little harder to tune in if you're clairvoyant. I know I've experienced that. If you've experienced that over the six months, it may be at least partially due to this Neptune being in retrograde. Okay. And uh, just touching on this this whole um, Neptune and Pisces season that we've been in since 2011. I'm going to speak more about this in my 2024 energy update video, but I really feel like Neptune has been a, a really super important, um, or it is a really super important um, aspect of this entire spiritual awakening that's happening on the planet. Um, so Neptune stage stationing direct here on December 6th, 2023 feels super significant. So as Neptune stations direct in early December, it may feel a bit like this foggy veil is lifting. Okay. It might be easier to find clarity and to set clear intentions and goals, especially for anything related to your spiritual practice or your divine service in the world. Conditions are ripe here for illusions to begin to dissolve and the truth to be revealed. And But remember that anytime we dissolve illusions or, or reveal truth, there will be a backlash Okay, because the darkness does not want to be revealed, right? So this could be a really powerful time for disclosures and whistleblowing. Um, and it also could become easier to seal and set and protect your boundaries. But again, when things are being revealed, the dark will resist more. And that's why I feel like we're likely to see, it may feel like we're going deeper into the dark. And we may be, right? So that's why it's so important for us to shine our light and to bring in that, that light of the sun into our hearts. Okay. And of course, this goes right along with um, the, 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 the Christian mythos, right, of the sun and also the solar mythos of the solstice and the return of the sun happening three days after the, the, the solstice here. Um, it's, it's fitting really, really well in. Uh, so I'm feeling like this could be a really, really powerful season. Um, also, the first to second week of December could be a really good time for goal setting okay because we're we're getting into that more clarity of of neptune going direct okay so looking at between the 6th and the 13th when mercury goes retrograde in that week or so i think it's a wednesday to a wednesday that could be a really great time for goal setting whether it's for personal goals or business planning um in conjunction with this jupiter the planet of expansion is set to go direct in Taurus on December 30th. 
So Jupiter has been in the sign of Taurus since May of 2023. It entered retrograde on September 4th, okay? So Jupiter retrograde supports more of this going within energy. When it goes direct, it supports more outward activities, okay? So we're still in this period of time where uh, Jupiter's retrograde is encouraging that any kind of going within, and that can include things like planning, setting intentions, getting uh, clarity about you know who you are, what you're here for, or how we want to be in service to the world. Okay, so beautiful time still for that. Um, and in conjunction with Neptune going direct, this can make December a really excellent time again for going within, opening to the spiritual guidance, setting intentions for 2024, okay? Um, and so this is especially true for financial help and business planning, because remember Jupiter's in Taurus, and Taurus has a lot to do with money, with finances and material wealth, okay? So Jupiter will remain direct in Taurus once it goes direct on December 30th. It's gonna may remain direct in the sign of Taurus through the end of May 2024. So for some of this, us, this uh, can signal the potential for some really nice financial things to happen in the early part of 2024. All right. Um, so let's do a spirit animal reading to support us through this month of December. And I'm going to be using my own spirit animal awareness deck. And by the way, this deck and everything else in my Etsy shop is on sale through the end of November, 2023. And just go in there and use the coupon code, thank you, one word, and uh, you'll get that 10% off, as well as uh, not just my Oracle cards, but I just came out with a new line of um, greeting cards. So we have uh, goddess cards, we've got some holiday cards. This is an example, and this is a spirit animal card. Actually, this is one of the holiday cards here. The star of wonder you can see they're blank within so you can use them for pretty much any occasion i've put uh packs of eight cards in there and again these are also going to be on sale uh through november with the coupon code thank you okay so with that said let's look at what animal is coming up to support us in december 2023 i love it it is dove Okay, so dove represents the Holy Spirit. It represents this uh, kind of purity, this innocence, the transcendence. Okay, and I feel like that goes so well with the message that came through. Um, the, the, the dove represents love and the love of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is a divine love that really puts others over ourselves, not in a martyr way, okay? Remember the boundaries and remember, you know, really holding true to yourself. That also includes financial abundance, okay? We need that a financial abundance is really a type of boundary, right? It says, okay, I'm going to set this strong, um, you know, a, a material or financial uh, platform for myself to work off of and um, just holding strong for that. So, um, but once we have that, that kind of uh, uh, a sense of material um kind of security, then we can really release the dove and um, just be here as a, a loving presence, which I think is the most important thing right now to stand firm and true in that sense of love and devotion for others. All right. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you feel like it's um, been helpful for you, I'd be so grateful for your likes, um, your shares. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. And remember, you were born to be free.